What is going on YouTube? This is your boy Sam from Team Zarex one here and today guys I'm coming at you with the brand new Exodia DAC Pro Vow for the 2019 format So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you guys are longtime subscribers of this channel You guys all know that I'm a huge fan of Exodia decks. This deck is not going to be an FTK deck Okay, you know, it's good to interact with your opponent. You know what I mean? So obviously in 2019 we're actually gonna move forward uh, You know from the FTK versions where you just use so many draw cards in your deck to actually help you draw all five pieces of Exodia in your first opening hand. You know, this deck is going to be a little bit different from your standard Exodia beatdown deck. And it's actually very competitive as well. When I try to build decks, I actually try to make the deck as consistent and as competitive as possible to compete in today's metagame. And if you guys want to see more deck profiles for 2019, make sure you guys go down there right now and smash that thumbs up button. That'll be absolutely amazing. Let's aim for 1,000 plus likes. And if you guys want to host with the channel, make sure you guys get the Exodia playmat today. I'll leave a link in the description box below to my website txs1.com this is odia playmat is gonna be exodia versus blue eyes ultimate dragon so if you guys are interested in that and want to help support the channel make sure you guys get this awesome exodia playmat in the link in the description box below all right guys so start with the monster you always want to play of course the five pieces of exodia so we're going to start off with exodia uh the forbidden one uh the head uh the left arm of the forbidden one uh, the right arm of, the, oh, that's that's the left leg. So we're gonna go with the left leg, uh, the right arm, and last but not least, the uh, right leg of the Forbidden One. And playing the Lost Art version just reminds me so much of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, you know, original animated series, which is really, really cool. So there we have it, guys, the one and only Exodia, the Forbidden One. Look how beautiful the Lost Art of Exodia looks, man. That looks absolutely, yo, guys, that's a beauty right there. This is one of the many win conditions that I have in the deck, which I'll later explain once I progress through the deck. But obviously, if you draw all five pieces of Exodia, you automatically win the duel. And obviously, one of the deck's main weakness is if this deck gets thrown away in the ocean, uh, which pretty much sucks. And you know, if your opponent throws the deck away uh, in the ocean, you just automatically just scoop up the duel. To round off for your Exodia engine, you wanna play, of course, the double, uh, the legendary Exodia Incarnate. If you guys do not know what the legendary Exodia Incarnate does, let me read you guys the effect real quick. Must be special in by attributing one for Forbidden one monster, I cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card gains a thousand attack for each forbidden one monster in your graveyard. Unaffected by other card effects, which is really awesome. Once per turn during your end phase, you can add one forbidden one monster for your graveyard to your hand. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can basically reveal any number of your forbidden one monsters in your hand. And if you do, you draw one card for each, which is really amazing. And the trap card for the deck also sends the Exodia pieces to the graveyard. So that way that your legendary Exodia incarnate can actually gain a uh, thousand attack for each uh, Exodia pieces in the grave. The max that this card attack can go up to is 5,000. So if you're actually able to beat down your opponent with this card, having all five pieces in the graveyard, probably one of the most nicest feeling ever is because this card can eventually become a 5,000 beat stick, which is unaffected by any other card effect. So the only way that can actually beat this card is by battle. And you can easily accomplish that by sending multiple pieces to the graveyard by using your trap card. And if this card were to die, you know, if you have three, uh, you know, pieces in your hand, you just reveal three pieces and then you draw three cards, which is really good to actually help you dig deeper into your deck for more of your stun cards. Cards, which I'll later showcase you guys through the deck profile. So that's pretty much it for the Exodia engine of the deck. Right here already, two win conditions by, you know, basically buffing up the legendary Exodia Incarnate's attack up to 5,000, and also having five pieces of Exodia in your hand is also another win condition. The next engine I would like to introduce to you guys is the brand new stun engine uh, for this deck. So for this deck, I am playing Triple Eater of millions, okay? The way that this deck works now in 2019, especially if you do not want to play the draw uh, version where you draw all five pieces of Exodia in your first opening hand, you gotta play stun cards. And the, one of the best stun cards in uh, this metagame right now is cards like Eater of Millions. This card is really broken. Cannot be normal summoner set, must be suffered from your hand by banishing five or more cards from your hand, field, and or extra deck face down. I cannot be special by any other ways. This card gets 100 attack and defense for each face down uh, banished cards. This face up card Card on the field cannot be tributed or used as a material for a fusion, synchro summon, or XYC summon. Once per turn, okay, at the start of the damage step, if this card battles a point monster, you can banish that monster's uh, face down. So if you have multiple copies of this card on the board, you're actually able to just get rid of any problematic monster on the board. Combining off with the legendary Exodia Incarnate, this card makes it easier for legendary Exodia Incarnate to actually deal uh, to your opponent a significant amount of damage. And you know, it's, it's one of the cards that can actually get rid of any problematic monsters on the board. It just makes it easier for legendary Exodia Incarnate 
opponent to actually kill your opponent, especially if you have multiple pieces uh, of your Exodia Forbidden One cards in the graveyard. So that way that this card can actually become really, really big. So you can just freely attack with this card. So, uh, you know, the Eater Millions is definitely a must-off in the deck. Back then, you're playing cards like Curry, Bandit, Sangan, and things like that. The format is too fast to play stuff like that. So today's metagame, summoning Eater Millions on the board can just, you know, solve so much problems because you can just easily get rid of any problematic monster. And then last but not least, for our stun cards, you want to play, of course, Triple uh, Thunder King Ryo. Thunder King Ryo is absolutely broken uh, in the deck. You know, can you imagine either Million Thunder King Ryo first turn? It's just insane. Obviously, if you do not open up Legendary Exodia Incarnate on the board, you can just easily normal some Thunder King Ryo, set a bunch of back row and pass, and then just basically stun your opponent until you see your Exodia pieces. So I believe that Thunder King Ryo is probably one of the best stun cards in today's metagame, especially against the Side Striker matchup. So, and I believe that the additional stun engine in the deck just complements really well with the Exodi engine. Like I said before, guys, if you guys want to play this deck, you got to play this deck as a stun style, you know what I mean? So playing cards like Eater Millions and also Thunder King Ryles can just be really beneficial. And if you guys do not know what Ryle does, both you and your opponent can't add cards directly from your deck to your hand except by drawing them. And if your opponent were to special summon a monster, you can tribute his card to negate the summon, which is really good. So this card is essentially a solid strike for the deck. So that's pretty much it for the monsters. Let's go off to the spells. The spells, obviously, since your entire deck is dark, you want to play, of course, you know, double allure darkness. Surprisingly, guys, if you need to banish one of your Exodia pieces, it's okay because you have multiple win conditions in the deck. Eater of the Millions as a win condition. Okay, you have Thunder King Ryo as a win condition. And you also have, you know, Exodia Incarnate as a win condition as well. So you don't always have to rely on actually drawing all five pieces of Exodia in your first opening hand. Same thing for a double pod duality. It helps you see three cards deeper into your deck uh, for your combo pieces. It does conflict with Thunder King Ryo, but obviously if you open up with Thunder King Ryo and pod duality, you want to obviously activate pod duality first before you normal summon. Uh, your Thunder King Ryo, right? Uh, do you want Upstar Goblin? Uh, you know, double hand destruction. The reason why this card is so good in this deck is because it sends your Forbidden One pieces to the graveyard, uh, which feels your legendary Exodia incarnate. And then, you know, obviously to add your Exodia pieces directly from your grave to your hand. You want to play, of course, double Dark Factory. If you have three pieces in your hand, you can just easily activate Dark Factory Masters production. You know, add, uh, you know, your missing Exodia pieces to just FTK your opponent. And also, at the same time, if you can just go hand destruction, send your pieces to the graveyard, draw into your incarnate, and you have Dark Factory in your hand, you can just activate dark factory uh, add one of your normal monsters to your hand normal summon a normal monster send it to the graveyard special summon legendary exodia incarnate and then you know depending on how many pieces that you have in the graveyard exodia incarnate will gain a thousand attack for each uh, exodia piece in the grave which is really good so Dark Factory and Mass Production, definitely a must off and then last but not least another win condition that you have in the deck is obviously double scapegoat Back in 2017, obviously, Lynx uh, wasn't popular, so Scapecoat wasn't in my deck. But now in 2019, Scapecoat is really broken. Scapecoat is a one-card Borrowload, Phoenix, Unicorn, you guys name it. It actually helps you make your Link plays, which is really, really good. So that's pretty much for the spells. Let's go off to your traps. traps. The reason why this deck is actually really good is the trap lineup. So we're going to start off with, of course, the Floodgates. Double Obliterate. This card is one of the best Floodgates in the deck is because it's your compulsory evacuation device. So you target one monster on the field, send a forbidden one monster or Exodia card from your hand or deck to the grid. Graveyard, and if you do, return that target to the hand. You literally summon Thunder King Ryo, okay, first turn. You know, obviously, uh, set Obliterate. Uh, hopefully, you have other Floodgates on the board. If your opponent tries to summon any problematic monster, you go Obliterate. Uh, target that monster that they summon. Send a Forbidden One Piece directly from your deck to your graveyard. So you send, you know, left left leg to the grave, for example. You Compulsory Evacuation by one of your opponent's monster. And then, so, basically having these two cards, you know, on the field is serves as two negates. And if this card is sent, to, you know, from the Spawn Trap card uh, zone to the graveyard, you basically get to add a Forbidden One Piece directly from your grave to your hand. But most importantly, this card, Foolish Burials, uh, your Forbidden one piece is directly from your deck to the grave and also and at the same time compulsory evacuation device and also works really well with legendary exodia incarnate as well you can target your legendary exodia incarnate to basically just buff its attack by addi uh, an additional uh, 1000 is because you can target this card but this card will not be affected this card will not be returned to your hand but you still get to send uh you know exodia piece uh directly uh from your deck to the grave to boost this card by a thousand uh, which is really cool as well so that's synergy that obliterate has with uh you know legendary exodia incarnate uh, which is really cool in my opinion run off your floodgates and play of course triple goals and match goals and match is broken your entire deck is uh is dark uh so goes a match works really well and if you have you know thunder king ryo you know with uh you know with either millions on the board or you know thunder king ryo with you know legendary exodia incarnate you guys might say sam you know this might conflict you know with incarnate and thunder king ryo 
No, it, it does not. It doesn't really because you can just go negate a summon, right? That your opponent tries to do with Ryo and then the only monster you have on the board is Dark. So you can just flip goals and match and, and then like you're pretty much Gucci. Like you're good to go, right? Because Thunder King Ryo can literally sack itself off any time to negate a monster summon. So you just negate the monster summon first and then activate goals and match. After your Solemn Baggage, obviously the Judgment, uh, the One Warning and a Triple Solemn Strike uh, in addition to your Triple uh, Thunder King Ryo. Uh, which is really amazing so like look look at all these negate cards guys like your opponent is not going through like they're not going through anything like you're just gonna stun your opponent and then they're gonna be unable to play Yu-Gi-Oh. okay that's how you we're gonna play exodia in 2019 okay we're gonna let our opponent play but not let our opponent play you know what i mean so uh obviously more stun cards throwing mirror force Punishes a lot of bad players that overextends and just try to protect your exodia incarnate so storming your force is really good uh, for that Double Infinite Impermanence. I know this card is very expensive right now, but you guys can also play Breakthrough Scale. It's just another really good hand trap for going second. But if you guys want to use Breakthrough Scale, you guys can go ahead and do that. I know this card is like $100 plus dollars right now. Uh, but it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, if you guys can't afford these, that's completely fine. Just replace these with either Effect Veiler or Breakthrough Scale. Breakthrough Scale would be more beneficial, actually, in this deck. And then last but not least, we're going to play, of course, Double Lost Win. Lost Win is just really good. It's because not, not a lot of people expect this card. And you can activate this card in the damage step. Your opponent with a special man, a monster from the extra deck, you can just reset this card. It's just a better impermanence, uh, you know, in my opinion. So you guys can just cut the impermanence and just play a third Lost Win if you guys would like. This card is just really uh, awesome. And, you know, going first and negating problematic special summoning monster effects. It's just, you know, really crucial in today's meta game. So that's pretty much for the traps, guys. Trap is just really, really heavy. Guys, let's go out to your extra deck. Your extra deck is in here for scapegoat. So, you know, Boro Loan, you know, Skur Saruja, Boro, you know, Boro Sword, a Cerberus, Phoenix, Unicorn, Lapranokis, Link Spider, Double Link Spider, Link Karibo, another Link Karibo, Space Insulator, you know, uh, Reprodocus, you know, Proxy Dragon, Underclock, and that's... Uh, pretty much it for your extra deck, guys. Extra deck is literally in here for either millions and at the same time, it's in here uh, for scapegoat. After your side deck, uh, you know, if you're playing, you know, a deck that utilizes a lot of monster effects, borders are coming in. You can also side the Exodia engine out if you guys would like. Going first, again, you know, double sight and obviously triple artifact sanctum. Very good cards going first right here. Locks your point from the extra deck. And going second, triple evenly match. Blow out cards against back row decks. And then last but not least, double gold soldier and double gold spell to round off for your, uh, not gold spell, ash blossom to round off uh, for your entire deck. So uh, and that's pretty much it for this deck profile, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said before, guys, this is not your standard, you know, Exodia deck that you guys usually see uh, on YouTube where, you know, they use, you know, Royal Magical Library or like so many draw cards just to FTK. This is like a beat down Exodia version, you know what I mean? With multiple win condition where, you know, obviously having five pieces of Exodia in your hand is one of them. Incarnate Beatdown is one of them. Uh, you know, Stunning Your Opponent is one of them as well. There's so many, uh, you know, different types of win conditions in the deck and that makes this deck really great. Especially if you want to play this deck on a competitive level. Obviously, this deck is actually a very fun deck. I wouldn't recommend taking any Exodia decks to regionals or YCS, but if you guys were to take an Exodia deck, I really think that a deck like this, uh, you guys can potentially just take to a competitive event because I built this deck to compete against today's meta, right? So, you know, this deck, I believe, is probably the best Exodia version, Exodia Beatdown version that I probably showcased on the channel uh, thus far uh, but overall guys I want to showcase you guys something different I want to showcase you guys something that's fun at the same time I know y'all you guys are just so tired of FTKs where you just draw 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 and that's not fun you know what I mean so yeah this is the new version of Exodia that I have for you guys you know very stun heavy very trap heavy and yeah man let me know what your thoughts are about this deck in the comment section below and this is your boy Sam from Team Sam Sam signing out thank you guys so much for watching all right peace <laughs> Like Usain in the cheetah print Talk fresh game, I don't need a minute R.I.P. the game, shh, I need a minute Okay, let's proceed with it I'm in the house, got to deep with it These bozos always sneak this And they taking shots, I'ma keep with it Like, no, no, this league business